Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here. Every season I touch base with my buddy Nick from Bogline Barbecues. He's always up to something. He got a hold of me again. He said, Jeff, we're doing some great stuff. You gotta meet up with me. I said, where? He gave me the address, jumped in the car. Let's go see what my buddy Nick from Bogline's doing today. Nick. How are you doing, Jeff? Hey, bud. Good to see you. Hey, you too, man. Hey, it wouldn't be a season of chilling and grilling with Jeff if I didn't hear from the guys at Bogline Barbecue. Hey, so you got to have it. I'm excited. What are we going to do today, and who's this gentleman over here? Well, Jeff, we're out here in Grand Bend at the Pinery Market. This is my buddy, Matt. Hey, Matt. Nice to meet you. Matt nice and his wife yeah. own the market here. We're going to be doing sausage today, and we got some chicken wings, but we're going to talk more specifically on the, on the science of sausage. The science of sausage. I love it. So the hardcore barbecuers, they want to butcher their own meat. They want to make their own sausage. Are they going to say, ah, it's easy to make sausage. I know how to do it, or we're going to do the whole thing. Well, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I don't think it's hard either. There's a right. couple key steps, and there's a couple important things that'll lead you to success. Okay, and one of them, I'm sure, is going to be the barbecue. I see many different barbecues set up, ready to go. Are we going to use them all, or one yeah, or two? We're yeah, we're going to use them all. Yeah, yeah? we're going to go for it. Yeah. What about charcoal? Do you got a good line on some good charcoal to use? <laughs> we might have some good charcoal, you too. Might have some good charcoal. And we might have something new in the charcoal world to show you, too. Great. Well, yeah. I always look forward to it. So this is a great location. Tell me a little bit about where we're at today. This, I mean, it's beautiful. Well, we're just three kilometers south of Grand Bend on Highway 21. The market's been here for 60 years. My wife and I have run it for 20. And we love barbecue and we love people and good food. So it's first of May till Thanksgiving and you can get whatever you want here. Listen, you got me at great food and great people. I'm a lover of both, as what, like you say. So we're here, everything looks fantastic. Let's make some sausage. Let's do it. All right. Well, it looks like we're ready to make some sausage here, my friend. We are. Walk me through the, I've personally never made it. I've eaten an enormous amount of sausage. You might not right. know that about me. You probably can't tell by looking at my slim physique, but sausage is one of my favorite things on the barbecue. But I've never actually, I let the experts do it. So. Well, I like sausage, especially one of the best parts of building barbecues is actually going to visit barbecue joints that our equipment works at. And a brisket's a brisket, pulled pork's pulled pork, right. you know, ribs are ribs. Right. But where you see that artistic flair in barbecue is in sausage. I agree. Because, it, yep. you know, there's so many things you can do. It's endless. Yeah. Um, so today we're actually doing a few. Um, we've got a simple salt and pepper. Um, that's one of my favorites. We're using a mixture of pork and a mixture of brisket. Um, so a lot of the time when we used to run a barbecue joint, we would use our trim. So from whatever we were, like we trim briskets pretty aggressively, right. but we always would make use of that trim. Um, in this case today, we didn't have any trim. So we get, you know, prime brisket and we get uh, whole pork shoulders and we cut them up and make sausage out of them. Now, will you make sausage occasionally just out of pork, some just out of beef, or is there a trick to having both meats at the same time? Once again, it's a piece of art. You can really do whatever you want. Our preference is generally a 50-50 a mix of pork and beef. Sometimes we'll lean a little heavier on the beef side. Okay. We like the mouthfeel of uh, beef fat versus pork fat. And when we're getting our fat ratio, which is something that's important, we generally lean more on the beef fat side than the pork fat. Okay. So we use leaner pork and fattier beef. Right. Um, so we're looking for about an 80% to 20% meat to fat ratio. Okay. Yeah, and that's really important. So we've already made a hot link today. Um, it's cold smoking already. We're gonna talk about cold smoking and stuff like that coming up. Um, but the hot link, um, I'll give you a quick ingredient list. Um, so we got pork and beef, just like we're gonna do here. Then we got salt, pepper, garlic, onion, cayenne, paprika, mustard powder, Keen's hot mustard powder specifically. Very specific. Yeah, right? thyme, and we're using a little bit of curing salts, red pepper flakes, milk powder, and then we use a little bit of ice and water as to kind of help the process go through the grinder and through the stuff. Okay. Here, we're gonna make a, a classic jalapeno cheddar. We've got all the ingredients pre-measured here. Uh, one thing to note, we're using old cheddar. You know, it's got a stronger flavor. Right. One thing that's important is we've already had this pre-cut up and in the fridge and it kind of dries out. You'll see high temp cheddar and really what it is is dried, dried, dried cheese. Out, dried yeah. Out yeah. Cheese. yeah, so yeah. we want to remove some of that moisture content and get that cheese pre-dried. Not a must, but it helps. That'll that, help it grind and... And it helps stay when the, when the sausage is finished. Instead of just being melted cheese that's kind of just turned into grease, it stays as a form, you know, in the sausage right. itself. Okay. We're using fresh jalapenos from Burns Garden. Your preference, we don't de-seed any of them. We like a little bit of extra heat. If you'd like, you can de-seed part of them if you're, you know, if you don't like it quite as hot. In my world, the jalapenos are the star of every show. 
Seeds we like it all. hot. Seeds them all. Seeds and all. Now, one thing I want to talk about too is we're going to be using pink curing salt today. Pink curing salt can be dangerous. It's not dangerous if it's used properly, but it's not something you wing either. You okay. need to have a proper recipe. Too much of this stuff can cause issues. So it's absolutely a necessity, but it, it's not something you just throw a handful in either. Right. So we're going to be cold smoking today. So this sausage is going to send, spend some time in, if you've taken safe food handling, in the danger zone. It's really important that we deal with that if we're going to be in that zone. And that's what curing salt does for us today. And because we are um, putting this process through, we're actually using um, accelerator today as well. So that's a cure accelerator and helps make sure that that happens right away. Otherwise, this sausage should go in the fridge for at least 12 hours with the cure in it before it hits cold smoke. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna add this all before we grind it. We're that's gonna right. season the meat and let, yep. let it sit and then grind it from that's, there. That's right. So the only one that we really do the other way is just salt and pepper. We pre-grind that, we add salt and pepper after. But in this case, we actually wanna get this emulsifying, start getting it sticky and, and start getting it um, flowing right away. So the first thing we're gonna do is we've got uh, 90 grams of milk powder. This just helps as a binder. It gets sticky, you know, it makes a good sausage. Okay. Keen's hot mustard powder. You can use any mustard powder. The hot mustard from Keen's is specifically good. Granulated garlic. I prefer this to garlic powder. Um, gives a little more, it'll moisturize yeah. once yep. we get it all together and gives a little more um, character, I guess. Paprika, more of a color than a flavor in this case. We've got salt. Now this is kosher salt, not table salt. There is a difference. I don't know the science of what's different, but it's, it's less, Salty. I don't know. It's it's just it's, <laughs> it's it's preferred. We've got curing salt. This is going to keep us safe. No, there's only ten grams. There's only ten grams. So that's what makes a pastrami a pastrami, right? It gives it the color, but it also it pure it it cures it. And then we're using some accelerator today as well. And that's going to just help the pink salt get to work. That's right. Right. Because we're we're gonna we're gonna get this made and we're gonna cold smoke it immediately okay. so that's just a, a step it's not necessary otherwise you'd case this sausage and you put it in the fridge for 12 hours okay and then last black pepper this is 16 mesh black pepper um i would say it's on the coarse side once again adds a little more character to the sausage so the garlic was coarse the salt was coarse the pepper's coarse there's, yeah there's a reason for we want to right? see yeah. that stuff yeah. you know yep um, and then we got a scale here. Uh, Jeff, I need uh, 300 grams of cream. Jeez, I always have to do all the hard work. Well, 300 grams. At least you won't get dirty. <laughs> and that's gonna help once again as a binder. It's also a bit of fat and it's also flavor, you know? It's, um, it's gonna highlight some of these other flavors. There you go. 300 grams of cream, right on there. All right, now we're just gonna mix all that together. We're gonna mix this all up and then we're gonna let this kind of marry and learn each other's flavors get and all happy. that other good stuff. Yeah, let it get And then happy. we're gonna pass it through that grinder. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put those jalapenos right into this mix and they're gonna pass through the grinder with the cheese and everything. Nice. So this is starting to starting to look good to me. We're gonna give this a few minutes. And I also wanna note that this meat's good and cold. So even in the freezer for a half an hour before you do this process helps. A little bit of ice in there isn't wrong either. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's all good. And then we're gonna be casing these today in natural natural casings. Synthetic just isn't the same. I wish it was, but it isn't. And it's also important to note too, when you're, get, when you're preparing those casings. So we actually soaked those last night. We'll rinse all the salt off. We will put them into uh, a container, fill it with water, dump it again, and then let them sit in their fridge overnight. It really is important. When you see when we get to, when we get to casing sausages, there's a, it's a real art. Uh, Vern and Will are gonna, are gonna run the stuff for today. Um, and Vern's one of the best stuffers that we have around. This looks great. You can smell it. it yeah. The color's really an awesome color. You can see where the paprika added to it. The aroma's coming out of there are huge. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be good. A little bit of paprika. We're gonna take these and we're gonna put them right in here. They're gonna pass through the grinder with the meat, seeds and everything. I did break the stems off because yep. nobody wants to eat the stem, but um, seeds and everything. Yep. And we're gonna get this in there too. Get some flavor in the cheese, get some yep. flavor on the peppers. And this is old cheddar, so I think that's important. You can use the uh, high temp cheddar as well. It, it does help, but yeah. we like to just cube this up the night before and let it dry in the fridge. Because you could just throw this on the uh, smoker right here the way it is, let that all cook up and get happy. <laughs> and a couple of you forks. You could. Sometimes too, we cheat and we'll make this into little hamburger patties. They make a great hamburger. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Good, all right, well, let's get this ready. What's going on, you guys? Oh, we're just uh, we're just about ready to grind this sausage, Is it Matt. time? How's this look, time. you a sausage guy? Yes, Does this look like it? Does this look like sausage to you? It looks like sausage, looks but not yet until it goes through here. Yeah. Through the grinder. Let's get it on. Is this gonna be suited to be a sausage and beer taping sausage? I can taste it now. You can taste it now? Yep. All right, well, let's get out of the master's way and let's let him get some more. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, we got the grinding experts on site. Everybody move to the side. Yeah. Let the professionals handle it. Why don't we walk us through with what's going on? Well, we got our mixture ready, so you saw how that went down. Once again, we're using a 3 16 orifice plate, so that's important. These guys are gonna, you notice Will's got the tool there. It's important not to stick your fingers in there. It'll grind your fingers just the same. That, that makes a whole different kind yeah. of sausage. Jalapeno. Jalapeno's right in there. It's gonna grind right into the mix. And we're gonna take a minute and we're gonna mix this after too, right? Because right. obviously okay. we're not yeah. gonna have yeah. even distribution of that uh, jalapeno. And that's okay. Yeah, we see the jalapeno coming through there. We see the cheese yep. is still sizable. Yep. And it, you're gonna grind this just once though, right? That's right. Right. Sometimes yep. we put it through twice. Hot link goes through twice. And also, it also depends on what type of orifice plate size you're using. A lot of the time, if you're gonna do a double grind, you use a quarter inch orifice plate, which is slightly bigger than that. Okay. And what will the size of this do? Why would we double grind it? Why would we not? What, what, how does that affect well, the Well, imagine, uh, you know, a sausage where you can see the different items in it versus a wiener, you know, like oh, okay. where it's more of a smooth, even right. Right. Okay. monotone texture, okay. right? So this is just gonna, this is gonna leave it fairly coarse. Okay. And in this case, we want that. This is a sausage that when you break this open, you see the different items in it. We wanna see yeah. that cheese. We wanna see the jalapeno peppers. We wanna yeah. be able to taste it all. You betcha. Once we start mixing this by hand, it's important. As you work it, it starts to get really sticky, almost to the point where it's balling up badly on your hands. That's when it's ready, you know? You need that, you want that sausage to bind together. It's really important. All right, this looks great. I'm just gonna stand to the side and watch this. It's looking fantastic, and uh, I can't wait to see the next step. Yeah. yeah. And talking about equipment too, Jeff, this is a good grinder. You don't need a good one. You can get one that goes in your KitchenAid stand mixer. Yeah. You know, obviously the good one is a big advantage. But if you're just making a small batch at home, the KitchenAid one works, you yeah. know, it, it's all good. It's really nice to have the good one, but it's not necessary. Yeah, you want lots of jalapenos and all, you gotta kind of read the jalapenos too. They really vary in hot. Yeah, and there's, you know? no, there's no way to read, there's no way to tell. You gotta try them, yeah. 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 Yep. So, you know, we, we put in 10 and we don't take the seeds out, but you can take the seeds out if you're, you know, for family friendly. Yeah. You can make this sausage with a jalapeno flavor that isn't gonna, that, that kids can eat. Yeah. Wash the oil off. Just yeah, so yeah. yeah. The heat's in the sea, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, we got all that uh, mixture put together. That looked incredible, smelled incredible. So yeah. now comes the tricky. I guess there's a real art form to this. Well, it's uh, not the easiast thing to do, no. If you go too fast, it makes a, lot, a little bit of a skinnier sausage. If you go too slow, it rips the side out of the casing. So yeah, there's a bit of an art to it. All right, well, let's see. I hear you guys are the experts. So they're no, gonna go for no it. No pressure. Live so, TV. We get these casings from the Canada Butcher Supply, which is right here in the GTA, cool. the Greater Thedford area. Um, <laughs> it's a size 32, 35 sausage casing. So okay. that's kind of your standard. So that's kind of the size, and then Vern's gonna give him a twist here. And he's actually gonna go opposite the next one, or else you're untwisting the one before, right? Right, makes yeah. sense, yeah. And so Will's setting the tension here, and this is a two-speed stuffer, so there's a high speed and a low speed. So now we're down on the low speed. And Vern's also yep. setting the pace. Ah. Oh, there's a blowout. Yeah, that happens. Blowout. We had a blowout. Yeah, so that happens. Um, but we'll just keep on moving, and um, that sauce is just get thrown back up and top. Yeah, no big exactly. deal. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and that's nice and stuff. There's no air pockets in there. That's important. We so you can see those chunks of jalapeno, the chunks of cheese. Yeah, and Vern's setting the pace by holding that sausage back to get the proper amount of fill in there. Okay. Yeah. So Will's setting the pace too. He's paying close attention. They got to work together. Um, you'll see a lot of people with pneumatic stuffers, and I think that's more suited to someone who's a real pro. You know, it's really hard to keep that pace, mm -hmm. you know, where the manual one is a little more forgiving. Right. And, and again, like you said earlier, I'm amazed, I go back to pointing out, but I'm amazed at how much you can see in there, like with, with the jalapenos. They're yeah. Real. It's, it's going to add a lot of flavor. Yeah, we want it. We want this sausage to showcase the ingredients visually. Right. You know, you eat with your eyes first. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to make these, and what's next? We're going to go put them on the uh, smoker? Yeah. This is where you're going to talk about cold smoking. That's right. And so what we're going to do is start the cooking process, marry all those flavors, and get some smoke on them without rendering the fat out of them, yep. you know? We don't want to melt that cheese into nothing. And um, we also are looking for a color. We want to get that nice mahogany color on there. Right. Okay. You know? I'm looking so, forward to that. I think a lot of people are going to have questions about cold smoking. I'm interested to see the process. So yeah. Let's get these guys finished up and went over the smoker. All right, listen, I learned a ton of stuff about making sausage. I had no idea that was super interesting. And the word that kept coming up was cold smoking. 
Yeah. So how the heck do you cold? What is cold smoking? So, how do we do that? So we talked a lot about cures, and what we got to remember is cold smoking is sometimes outside of a food safety zone. So that's why we're using things like curing salt, and in this case, curing salt accelerator. Um, that's going to help keep us safe because today we're cold smoking at about 145 to 150 degrees. We don't want to go over that. So we, is the goal to cook the sausage or just add flavor? The goal is to par cook this sausage and add flavor and color. But we want to if we if we cook that sausage too hot and fat fast, we render out a lot of that fat. It leaves our sausage not not plump and firm. You know, okay. we want to keep a good a, a good volume in our sausage. We want to get this sausage par cooked, but we don't want to completely cook it. So a lot of the time when we're done this process here today, we're going to put this sausage immediately in an ice bath and that's going to stop that cooking process and we're going to vacuum seal that sausage and we're going to put it in our freezer and we're going to keep it for later and then we're either going to grill it or put it on a flat top or put it on a smoker again to bring it to final temperature, which so, is So we want to get it out of that dangerous temperature zone. We're going to pull it off of here, chill yeah, it right away, drop that that's temperature. Right. So you yep. like get it in the freezer. We don't want it sitting in that danger zone too yeah. often. Yeah, and we're going to be uh, smoking around 145, 150, and we're going to get a nice color. So if we look at these ones here now, oh, through man. the, the Magic of TV, this is our Texas yeah. hot link. So you can see we're firm. We've got a good volume on our sausage. You've got a nice color. The color is, is beautiful. So yeah. we'll just have a lot of smoky flavor. Were we adding smoke flavor as well? Well, so that's kind of new here. So Vern in the charcoal yard, the odd time. So we're running charcoal, like, you know, you know, our, you know the bog right, line bush yeah. coal, but every now and then the kiln will have a piece that doesn't completely carbonize. It's hard wood still. Okay. So we call this half baked. Yeah, you, can um, almost, you can almost see that it's wood. It yeah, it's like just wood not, it's just not quite yeah. done. Yeah. So what we're going to do is this works great in Kamados too, because they're always lacking that smoke flavor right. and the charcoal burn so clean, it's missing that smoke flavor. Right. Um, it has its own charcoal flavor, but it's not smoked. So we're using a little bit of this in the smoker today. Okay. And you'll find these offsets. If you run them on charcoal, it won't really go over 150. You know, okay. this thing is pegged at 150 all day. And we're looking for about four hours of smoke time on these cold smoked okay. sausage. Good, awesome. And so yeah. from here, we're gonna chill them down, drop the temperature. Of course, we're gonna pull a few off and we're gonna get them up to temperature so we can Yeah, so what we're gonna do in. right now is we're actually gonna pull a couple off and we're gonna, um, because we don't need to stop that cooking process right now, we're actually gonna bring a couple up to temperature for you to try. So we're gonna take these off the smoker right now. We're gonna put them on the other smoker, which we have running at a higher temperature, like 300, 325. Right. And um, we're gonna bring them up to final temp for you to right. try. So we made the sausage, we're cold smoking them. Yep. From here, we're gonna cook them so that we can actually eat them. We're not gonna eat them from here. No, they're Perfect. not safe yet. They're not safe. Yeah. All right, let's You're throw, okay let's throw them on the grill. You're okay for sausage? Like really, Listen, really good sausage? The only problem is, what goes best with sausage? Cold I've got beer? it. I've got it covered. All right. Good thing we're in Tux Gas Park because the cold beer is like ten feet away. Works for me. Let's throw these on the grill. All right. So we're gonna throw them in here. Yeah. So we're hey, over th here. Th this is. A, I gotta. I gotta point out. This seems a little bit different than the first time we filmed the barbecue. That's, that's new technology. Pretty uh, easy. Daryl ordered this barbecue and he asked for one finger doors and that's what they are. Makes it easy. Makes it easy. Even my mother can pick up barbecue and. That's right. So, Good. imagine these just come out of an ice bath. They went into a vacuum seal and we pulled them out of our vacuum seal now. They're in the freezer, they're thawed out. Of course, you and I are patient enough to do all that. We're That's gonna right. go right to the We're using the part. magic of TV here. Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna pull this upper shelf out. We wanna cook these kind of on the hot side, probably 325. They'll probably only take, in this case, 20, 30 minutes because we've already got them, you know, almost there. Just before you close that up, oh. I noticed that a few chicken wings going on. We're doing some research and development today. So we're <laughs> playing around with uh, brining chicken wings. They, these ones here are a pickle brine. Um, those ones there are more of a, Daryl did a homemade brine. Uh, it'd be salt, sugar, mm -hmm. citrus, um, rosemary, um, all those good stuff. So we're, we're not just gonna get, you know, the unenviable job of just eating sausage and drinking beer all day. We're gonna have, have to have some chicken. We'll wings. have a few wings too. I think uh, Vern's gonna throw together an Alabama white sauce for them as well. So awesome. they, they, it'll, be a, it'll be a little bonus around there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't believe how easy these doors are to maneuver. Yeah, so we wanna bring these sausage up now on this thousand gallon smoker to about, uh, you know, 165 at a minimum but we don't want to go over 170, 175 either. Once again, we don't want to render too much of that fat. We want to keep a nice plump sausage. It should actually have a good snap. Yeah, it, you want to it, get that snap. Yeah, it should literally on. make a snap sound. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, let's, let's give these a moment and we'll uh, go sit down and relax. Thanks, Jeff. The sausages look like they were done. 
Yeah. Well, you're right. They're around about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Well, to be honest, Jess, yeah, they're a little wrinkly. It's yeah. a little too much, but we're yeah. going to let it slide today. And you pulled off some of those chicken wings. Yeah, these are research and development wings. We're just giving them a whirl. So That's is that part a... of your world, research and development on a regular basis? Yeah. 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 So what are we making over here? Well, Vern, you go ahead. Alabama white sauce. This is a staple down south, and uh, it's unbelievable on these wings. We're just going to drizzle it over the wings. That's and... right. All right, so what's in it? We got uh, a couple cups of mayo. Delicious. So what do this you add uh, to the mayo? apple cider vinegar. Okay. Yeah, not vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Also, that's real mayo too, not like I miracle tell, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Fresh yeah. squeezed Actual mayo, juice. yeah. yeah. Right. Secret ingredient, a couple tablespoons of horseradish. Yeah. Hotter the better. Hotter the better. Absolutely, yeah. all the time, all the time. Dijon mustard. You got a few ingredients going in there. Uh, we have uh, Worcestershire here. What's that? Same stuff. <laughs> uh, brown sugar, garlic powder, cayenne pepper. Give her a little spice. Yeah. And just some black pepper. And this is the custom mixer. Throw her on that custom mixer here. Throw her in the blender. Uh, yeah. Just like a fine moonshine. You give her a good shake. Hey, guys, guys, guys. One last ingredient. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. We forgot the beer. Yeah, yeah. The beer's most important. Cold First. beer. Great location and uh, some great food. We've got to have some great beer. And good friends. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. Good food, good friends, good people, good barbecue, good beer. Awesome. So now we're going to take these sausages and we're going to oh, cut look them. At the color in there. <sighs> look at that. You probably wouldn't like them, Jeff. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no, I'll let you guys taste them. They don't look very tasty. We're going to cut them on a little bit of an angle. No real reason, just for show. There you go. And then yeah. Vern's going to give those a little drizzle. All right. From the custom Vern mixer. Oh, just pour that right over. Look at that. Mm -hmm. mm. So once again, we got a simple dish. We don't get too fancy around no, here. No, it's very, very rustic. Yeah, yeah. So nothing fancy here. No, no, no. Just, just pretty basic. Well, I'm going to dig in. Yeah, go for it. Come on in. Let's, let's try this. Let's give this a shot. So look, I, I'm amazed the color and how you can see everything in there. It was good. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wow. It's a good clean smoke. The heat's there. It's got that snap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so we nice should heat. do that. Yeah. Yeah, wait for it. Oh, <laughs> nice mixture. There's yeah. some heat, but it's not it's not killer heat. It's yeah, like, it's not crazy, but it's it's yeah. not you know, I don't think you'd give it to kids. What did we call this sauce? Alabama, Alabama white sauce. Alabama white sauce. Yep. And you can also the brine has a hot sauce in it, and you can taste that hot sauce right through the meat. Mm. But it also isn't like it's not hot, but you can mm. really taste the hot sauce. Wow, those are incredible. We've mm -hmm. turned the show into a little bit of a chicken wing competition now. Because okay. I one of the earlier episodes, I commented on our good friend, Adam Brock. He made what I called the best chicken wings I'd ever had. So now that challenge goes out every time. Mm. So now I can't comment anymore because <laughs> somebody will say, are they better than Adam's? Are they better than Brocky's? Well, let's just say they're really, really good. Well, guys, I got to be honest, that kind of melted down there. We kind of lost the shot a little bit. The food oh, was just bit. too darn good. We all kind of <laughs> got onto those chicken wings, got onto the sausage. That was fantastic. What an episode. I appreciate you guys giving me, connecting with me every year, bringing me out. I'm always surprised. The episodes are always fantastic. We we kind of did one thing. We had one job, yeah. sausage. Yeah. And man, did you guys make some fantastic sausage. It's absolutely yeah. incredible. So what a great location. Thanks for letting us film here. Glad it's you're here. Beautiful. What a, what a place. I encourage everybody to come out and just take a look. It's fantastic. The beer was great. The food was fantastic as always. The barbecues look amazing. Once again, cheers, guys. Thanks for having us here today. Cheers, Thank guys. You. Cheers. 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 cheers.